Listen to the Burkina Bay Prime Minister Dr. Apollinaire Joachimson Tambula explain the reasons behind the recent multiple attempts to destabilize power in Burkina Faso in this address to the media that he delivered on the Thursday of October 3, 2024, as he presided over the trooping of colors at the Burkina Primature. It's an address in which he also revealed on a sad note that the destabilizers of Burkina are particularly aiming at assassinating Captain Ibrahim Traoré, just like how they did to Captain Thomas Sinkara 37 years ago. You know that the head of state delivered an important speech yesterday. I therefore invite you to absorb it, to take ownership of it and to make this speech a guide for our future actions. He spoke in particular about the traitors of the nation. As you know, since President Traoré has been there, there have been constant attempts at destabilization. So many, most of them, are aiming for the particular assassination of President Ibrahim Traoré, who is a thorn in their flesh. Why? Simply because, as in the time of Thomas Sinkara, the path we have taken calls into question many things. Even the Fakadon that we want to promote means fewer markets for the textile industries. The local dishes that we want to promote mean fewer markets for the international food industries. Our policy of economic sovereignty greatly challenges the interests of the imperialists who had made our space the private hunting ground. So the policy we are currently pursuing greatly challenges, especially economic, cultural and moral interests. We have managed to demonstrate that the West is no longer indispensable to the progress of this world because other powers have emerged and are supplanting the Western powers. This is what we have demonstrated with our current diplomatic policy, which lies in the diversification of partnerships. And all this does not please the former masters of our spaces. This is the only cause of all these troubles that are being provoked, and for that, they are ready to spend dollars and euros to achieve their goals. But if we hold firm, if we are aware of what we are doing and where we are going, we must be able to resist all this. That is why the President invited all of us in his message not to be traitors to our country. So this second phase of the days of patriotic commitment and citizen participation began on October 2nd. A symbolic date of the delivery of the political orientation speech by the Comrade President Captain Thomas Sinkara. I am almost sure that many of you here have never read it. Maybe some of you have never heard of this, so we have reproduced this speech in several copies and you can get them by contacting the Prime Minister's office. I believe that the Chief of Staff here and the Special Advisor to Amoeba here, if you contact them, they could give us copies. I invite each head of household to have at least one copy of this speech. It is not enough to have it as decoration and to promote it, but to have it and to appropriate it, otherwise you will not be able to understand not only the current progress of our people, but the progress of the African people and the world. This brings me to another subject which is the start of the school year which began on October 1st. So I hope that your children who are going to go to school to learn, not only to read, but also gain knowledge and education, because we have always said, you know, the ministry have been transformed into the Ministry of Education, and personally I have always fought against this so that we return to the Ministry of National Education.
Teaching is not education. You can have all the knowledge in the world and not be educated. We knew education without school. In our traditional families, there were education systems that consisted of making the child useful to himself, useful to his family, useful to his society. Education can give you knowledge without you being useful to yourself, useful to your family, or useful to your society. We see people full of knowledge who commit suicide because they have no meaning in life. They have lost the meaning of their own life. Now when you lose the meaning of life, everything around you becomes empty. So it is not just about having education, knowledge, but education that will anchor you in your national heritage and that is how you can shine in your country and in the world. It is like education is like a tree. The tree grows by the roots, the trunk and the leaves shine and people can reap the fruits. That's what education is. So I ask you, to contribute to the education of your children, so that your children are not like simple guinea fowls, who wanders around without reference points, a well-educated child moves on the right path. He doesn't move around just anyhow. A well-educated child respects his teachers and his superiors. A well-educated child respects his parents. I think the president said it. The president said that he himself had his mother's mischief. I did it too because in my family the first three children were boys. It was the girls who came later. But my mother had to wander around in these jobs. So we did women's jobs. That's what education is. In education, there is no shame, because there is no stupid job, there are only soft people. So I ask you, to contribute to the education of your children. There are parents, once the child is at school, we leave them to the teachers. Teachers do not educate children, they give them the rudiments of knowledge. It is up to you in the families to educate your children and you yourself must educate yourself. If you are not educated, what education are you going to give to your children? That is why I am going to tell you something. You know in the evolution of the world, the evolution of the world has known several stages. There was a stage where the strongest were the warriors, the fighters, like the gendarmes who are here. That time has passed, the dominators of the current world, they are those who have the economic power, that is what you see in countries like the United States and so on, who dominate the world. We are sliding into another stage. And in this stage, those who will dominate the world will be those who have knowledge. It is those who have knowledge. It is not for nothing that the person who led the children there is a lecturer at the university because she has knowledge. I invite you not to be behind in history and to have knowledge. Even you journalists who are young here, if you do not have knowledge. I sometimes read in the newspapers, where you tell things believing, you know, when it is false. The very foundations are false, but you mislead others, because you know someone who does not have knowledge is someone who is terminated. He understands nothing in the world, so he resorts to superstitions, to maraboos and to fetishes which have no effect. The proof is that our grandparents, despite their fetishes there, they could not prevent the settlers from coming to us here, and currently, there are the terrorists who massacre us with machine guns, but there are our fetishists who cannot even detect them, and who cannot resist them. So these are elements that are obscured due to the lack of knowledge. The partial knowledge that many are endowed with, and including you journalists, leads to arrogance or revolt which is not constructive.
We see many people getting excited because I know that 1 plus 1 equals 2, so therefore I am an expert and so on. It is only partial knowledge which is not constructive which leads to arrogance or revolt, but perfect knowledge which is what I want you to acquire leads to revolution. Revolution is not a revolt. The one who is revolted is revolted against something, but he does not know which path to take to solve the problem of his revolt. The revolutionary is revolted against a system that he wants to repair and he knows the path to take. That is the difference. And only perfect knowledge of things, of the environment, of history can lead you on the path of revolution. But more than perfect knowledge leads you to the path of wisdom. When we talk about the wise, the prophets and so on, these are people who have acquired more than perfect knowledge. So the path of knowledge is a long journey that only the persevering can reach. Well, the lady here is a lecturer, she can tell you the path she took to become a lecturer, and it is not yet the end of the road. So this is to tell you that embarking on the path of knowledge is not an easy thing, but it is the path you must take if you want to be useful to yourself, to your family, to your society and to history. So on the occasion of this return to school and on the occasion of the anniversary of the political orientation speech, I urge you to do this. There are many people who do not understand what we do because they have no knowledge. They do not have knowledge of history, social facts and so on. However, you have learned to read, from the moment you have learned to read, the rest of the work is done by yourself. It is yourself. Well, and how am I going to say, I live on Ousmane Samban Avenue, that you all know for having been the first French-speaking filmmaker. Ousmane Samban only had a primary school certificate, the rest of the work he did himself. We all studied Kamara's Black Child Garlic. Kamara only had CP or CAP, but he wrote a literary classic. From the moment you learn to read, to know that 1 plus 1 equals 2, and A, B, C, D, you have the beginnings and the fundamentals to go further by yourself. The rest is laziness that kills everything. So I invite you, it's up to you, to embark on the path of knowledge and revolutions so that together we can build our country. You have seen, haven't you? What is currently happening on the international scene, where Israel killed, isn't it, the leader of Hezbollah, and the response came from Iran, located nearly 2,000 kilometers from Israel. How could the Iranians have returned to this? It is not through fetishism, it is not through malabouts, it is not through incantations, it is through knowledge. It is through knowledge that you can assert yourself and defend yourself. This is the message that I have to convey to you on the occasion of this return to school and on the occasion of the anniversary of the celebration of the political orientation speech of 1983. So I invite you on this path so that we can all join together for a one Burkinabe, and so that they can know that even if they have been chased out of Ouagadougou, they can always come back and circulate and we will support them and we will be able to guide them on even brighter and more radiant paths. Thank you.